He's a heretic. She's a false prophet. They're false teachers. These are the criticisms that are thrown around by believers at other believers so carelessly and callously. I want to talk to you today about how to judge with righteous judgment. The truth is that we need a balance. Yes, the scripture does call for discernment and judgment and weighing truths, but the Bible also makes it clear that the believers are to be united in love, even despite doctrinal disagreements. I want to talk to you about this because I know, especially as we move into this next great move of the Holy Spirit, that the enemy is going to try everything he can to divide the church. And so I want you to leave your heart open. I want you to leave your spirit open and, of course, discern. But listen to what's being said in this message because I believe God wants to break some paradigms. So let's humbly approach the Word and see what the Scripture has to say on this matter. Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship, and then we're going to get right into this challenging word. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. And when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. And when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. And when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. First of all, I want to begin by saying that I understand that the scripture makes it clear that we have a responsibility to discern and to rightly divide the word of truth. We have to question prophecies. We have to question things that seem suspect. And the Bible makes that perfectly clear. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. Jude chapter 1 verse 3 says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, or of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So, that word contend talks about defending or holding to or keeping your ground. So the Bible is very clear. We are to be discerning and there are false prophets in this world. We are to judge. There is this idea, especially in the United States concerning judgment that we're not to judge. Judge not lest ye be judged. And we're going to show you that portion of scripture in just a moment. And we throw these ideas around of well, we don't want to judge this person or that person, and we try to be very lenient. And I understand that we need compassion. I understand that we need love and mercy and all of these wonderful things that are characteristic of God. But the Bible actually teaches us that we are to judge. In fact, Jesus said, when judging someone, you'll know them by their fruits. You'll know them by what they produce in their lives. Now, this doesn't mean that if anyone's ever made a mistake, that they are therefore not of God. I mean, think about yourself. After giving your life to the Lord, 
Have you never made a mistake? Have you never made an error? Have you never looked at a scripture and maybe not rightly divide it? So this is not saying that if you make a mistake or that if you have something that sounds a little off or seems off, that you are therefore thrown out. No, this is Jesus talking about a very foundational truth in that from bad trees comes bad fruit. And from a good tree will come good fruit. But let's take a look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. This is what the scripture says. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Verse 5, hypocrite. Now watch this. This is very key because often people quote this portion of Scripture to say that you are not to judge anyone. The Bible says, judge with righteous judgment. We're to judge those within the church who are sinning. Look very carefully at what Jesus says. Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. So Jesus isn't saying, don't judge. Jesus is saying, if you're going to pass judgment, make sure you're not a hypocrite and doing worse or the same that you are judging someone else for doing. He is basically talking about judging in accordance to how you live. Now, the scripture isn't telling us not to judge. That's perfectly clear. But just remember this. God will judge you with the same standard that you use to judge others. Judge with righteous judgment. So, the Bible makes it clear. Discernment, ask questions, judge, be on the lookout, be on your guard. But at the same time, there is a balance. Is this a license to criticize everyone? Is this a license to divide and to isolate? By no means. Trust me, I've seen frauds. You want to talk about false prophets? I was sitting in a church service when this so-called prophet gets up and stands up in front of everybody. And I'm sitting somewhere in the front row and he calls out this gentleman in the very back. And for the sake of privacy, I'm just going to make up a name here. We'll say, is there a Johnny Simpson here? And so the guy stands up and he says, that's me. He goes, I see that you live at, and he tells him his address, address, city, state, zip, everything. This guy had it down. And the man says, well, I don't actually live that, that place anymore. I don't live there, but I forgot to change it on my Facebook page. So it was very obvious that the prophet, so-called, was just gathering information from people's Facebooks, and as they checked into the service where he was ministering, he was pulling from those profiles. This happens. There are false prophets. There are frauds who are out there. I've seen people use the earpiece, and they talk to people on the radio, and it's so-called words of knowledge. I've seen, unfortunately, I've seen where people pay someone to say they've been healed. And they weren't really healed, they're just an actor. And they justify it by saying, well, it stirs the faith of the people, and therefore it is ultimately for the better. But I'm not saying that there are no frauds. I'm not saying that there are no false prophets. I've seen heretics. I've seen preachers, so-called, who claim the name of Jesus out of one side of their mouth, and then out of the other side of their mouth claim that there are multiple ways to God. That is obvious heresy. But what is the balance? How do we find this then? Because we don't want to find ourselves falling for anything that's being said. And at the same time, we don't want to criticize fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who may disagree with us. Here's a good balance. And we're going to find it actually in the portions of Scripture that we just read. Remember, we read 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. But then verse 2 tells us how to know. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of, of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. Is a false prophet someone who disagrees with you on, let's say, uh, which day you should go to church? 
Is a false prophet is someone who disagrees with you on, let's say, whether or not we should speak in tongues? Is a false prophet someone who disagrees with you on divine healing? No. A false prophet is someone who denies that Jesus came in the flesh, who denies really, I mean, you look very clearly here, verse 3, but if someone claims to be a true prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus in general, someone is preaching another Christ. Now, just because they are preaching different doctrines that surround Christ, that doesn't mean that they are preaching a different Jesus. So that's one example. Another example, Jude chapter 1, in verse 3, we read it. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Okay, so is this an excuse to be a bully online? Is this an excuse to call out everyone who disagrees with you on any subject matter whatsoever in the scripture? No. What does it say in the next verse? For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, in other words, they were assigned to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. What are they, what are they denying here? They're denying Jesus. They're denying him as the only God, the only way, the only Lord. So this is a very specific, very detailed look at who the false prophets are. Consider this one too in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Does that mean that they cannot say the phrase Jesus is Lord? No, there are many frauds who will say Jesus is Lord. It's talking about the message that they bring. No one is going to sincerely preach about Jesus if they don't have the Holy Spirit. And even if they are insincere, Paul the Apostle says, so long as the gospel is being preached, that's okay. God's going to judge them in the end. So that's a basic standard. So let me be clear. The definition of heretic is not anyone who disagrees with me on any biblical point. That's arrogance and pride. If we agree on these things, Why tear each other apart? Jesus is the only way. Jesus purchased our salvation through his death on the cross. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus came in bodily form. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. These are the fundamentals of the Christian faith. You look at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Those are the Gospels, the Gospel. Now, the writings of Paul, the epistles, the Old Testament, these are important. These are divinely inspired. These are the perfect messages from heaven. But salvation and the gospel is very simple. It's surrounding the doctrine of Jesus. So I want to be very clear here. I'm not saying that we aren't to judge. I'm not saying that we aren't to discern. I am saying that our standard needs to be the word of God and nothing else, not our own opinions. So now there are many ridiculous reasons that people will criticize and judge. I mean, I don't agree with how they do things. So I know of, in fact, I was just talking with Stephen Moctezuma today. We were were watching something, and this gentleman was sincerely saying that if you have drums in your church or anything like that or certain types of beats, that it's satanic in nature. And the guy was absolutely serious, and people believed that. Where in the Bible does it say that? Well, they don't, do the, they don't apply the methodology I apply. They don't do it the way I would do it. Some people have criticized me because I'm not out on the streets. I'm not in the hospitals. Well, how do you know I haven't gone to hospitals, first of all? And Jesus was rarely in the streets. Sure, he ministered in the tre- streets sometimes, but he said, I was with, what did, they, what did he say when they came to arrest him? I was with you in the temple every day. That's, that was how he structured his ministry, but I'm not criticizing anyone for going out in the streets. Some people criticize me for using media because it's a little more of an expensive means. But we've seen thousands of people get saved. We cannot criticize each other based on methodology. So I don't agree with everything they teach. Well, so what? All heresy is error, but not all error is heresy. I'll give you an example of that in just a bit. I'll just tell you now. Think about Peter and Paul. 
They fundamentally disagreed on what to do with certain Jewish rituals. Fundamentally. And it was a huge split. It was a big problem. Peter and Paul disagreed with one another doctrinally. Does that mean one was a heretic and one wasn't a believer? (laughs) By no means. They were both men of God, filled with the Spirit, who had personal interactions with Jesus himself, who wrote portions of the Scripture. And they had doctrinal disagreements. Not every doctrine is the primary doctrine. The primary doctrine is Jesus. It's salvation. That is our standard. So I've seen so many disagreements. I mean, you say we should worship on Sunday. I say we should on Saturday. Let's divide. You say King James Version only. I say all of the translations are fine. Let's divide. Speaking in tongues is for today. Speaking in tongues is not for today. Let's divide. Healing is for today. Healing is not for today. Let's divide. Some will say poverty or prosperity. Let's divide over it. We had a recent issue with this. And I was very embarrassed for some of the people who spoke out because I knew they were, I knew they were sincere, but at the same time, I, I, I was amazed at the ignorance that was surrounding a certain topic. And I watched as people criticized others because of what they believed about finances. I mean, my goodness, is money really worth dividing over? Is money really that important that we should divide? You believe one way about finances, I believe another. She believes one thing about finances, he believes another. Some say godliness is in poverty. Some say God can bless you with some prosperity. Look, I'm not talking about the prosperity gospel here. I'm talking about just some believe that wealth can be used for the gospel, and some believe that poverty is the only way. But why anyone would divide or call someone a false prophet or call someone a heretic or or say, I cannot be a part of this no longer, just because of the issue of finances, it's saddening, it's heartbreaking. And we need to mature past these issues. Free will or predestination, let's divide. And we just, we look for all these places to divide. And if the fellow believer isn't exact with us on every single issue, we say, let's divide. It's amazing to me that we judge others by their actions while judging ourselves by our intentions. We can disagree on the peripherals. What I mean by the peripherals? Okay, um, peripherals are side doctrines. Again, examples like what you believe about healing. I believe in healing. I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe in the prophetic for today. But if someone doesn't agree with me on that, I'm not going to call them a false prophet. I'm not going to criticize them. I'm not going to call them a heretic. Why? Because we have a more important point of agreement, and that is who Jesus is. So, Don't let the peripherals keep you from uniting if you agree on the primary. So, again, we can disagree on the peripherals and still unite on the primaries. We agree on Jesus. We agree on Him being the only way. Look for those who are preaching that message. Sure, they may say a thing or two that you disagree with. That was the case with Peter and Paul. That was the case with many members of the early church. That was the case of many of the people who followed different disciples, Apollos or Paul, but that didn't cause them to divide. We need to recognize that there is something more important that unites us. And, and, you know, we do need to be careful in how we criticize men and women of God. We have to be very cautious with how we approach this. I myself have been guilty of this. I myself have criticized people. And the Holy Spirit a faithful friend, has rebuked me for criticizing certain people. We need to be careful with how we do it. Some take doctrinal issues. Again, we can agree on the basics. You know, some take issues with the past mistakes of men and women of God. They did it to Catherine Coleman. She was divorced. She repented of of her sin. She said, Lord, forgive me. She moved on. And someone came up to here years later and said, you shouldn't be preaching the gospel. You were divorced years ago. Catherine Coleman, in the way that only she could, said, oh, my dear, I believe you have me confused for someone else. In other words, she no longer identified with that sin. But still, the body of Christ eats its own. We're talking about love, grace, and mercy. Yes, and I understand truth and justice and and, and balance. 
but we need to find that balance. Now, imagine if God was as harsh with you concerning your sin as you are with certain men and women of God who have made mistakes in their past. What if God said, I'll never use you again because of a mistake you made? He certainly wouldn't do that. So why do we do that to our fellow brothers and sisters? Now, some take issues with their methods. As I said, oh, that person's too, you know, some people say I'm too charismatic, too flashy. Okay, you know, others will say, wow, you're not as flashy as other people. It doesn't matter. Methods is not what matters. It's the message. It's how you, it's how you frame that message, the truth of who Christ is. Now, the Bible says in James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone who gave the law is the judge. He alone has the power to save or destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Now, this again is a different context. It's not saying in general, don't judge. It's a very specific instance there concerning the law. But still, the idea is with your brothers and sisters, you don't slander them. And... You know, I really think the root, and this is my final point, and then I want to pray with you. The final point is this. Paranoia prevents unity. Really, the root of all of this is fear. Fear of missing it. Fear of not getting it right. Fear of being deceived. And sometimes that might even be pride. No one's going to get me. No one's going to change my mind. That's pride. And so God wants to set you free. From that isolation. He loves you. Listen, I I am not against any believer. I'm not against you. I'm for you. I love you. I pray for you. I want God's best for you. This is why I'm bringing this word. And I know I can sense that the Holy Spirit is convicting some. In fact, some of you, as the Holy Spirit's trying to speak to you, you're trying to harden your heart because you don't want to admit that you've been wrong. Look, I will be the first to admit I failed in this area. I personally have criticized people. And I've repented before God and even before people. Here's why I'm speaking this message, because the coming move of God is going to require that we all be united. Again, I understand we're not going to agree on everything, but we agree on Jesus. So let me give you an example of this paranoia. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Now some will take that verse and will say, well, anyone who lays hands on the sick and says they can perform miracles in the name of Jesus is false. Anyone who casts out demons is false. Anyone who, who says they can do any mighty work is false simply because some who do mighty works will be condemned. But see, it's hard to find those nuances when we're so stubborn in our way. It's, fi- it's hard to find that godly rationale when we're so fixed on the way we see things. And so we attach the verses to anything that we think it could be. Oh, false prophet, false prophet, false prophet. Why? Healing, prophetic, or, or they say they do mighty works. Fall, and, and the truth is that Scripture is not talking about everyone who performs miracles. It's talking about the people who depended on those miracles to save them. And that's just one example. And they'll get locked into certain key words. And, and it's like, and I, I'm not trying to be insulting, but it's like someone who's lost their mind. No matter what you tell them, nothing's going to work. There's a story about a man who was convinced that he was dead. And he was certain of this. And so he went to a psychiatrist and this person is talking, the psychiatrist is talking to him saying, look, you're not dead. I can help you understand this. And so he's like, no, I'm dead, no matter what the psychiatrist said. So he helps him out and says, well, okay, we'll do a little test. Is it a fact that dead people don't bleed? The man says, yes, that's a fact. Dead people don't bleed. So, okay, so if I cut you and you bleed, we're going to find out. So, okay, let's see. So the psychiatrist he cuts the man on his hand. The man begins to bleed. And he says, Say, there, I proved my point. And the man, shocked, said, 
dead people do bleed. You see, there's no convincing some people. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to soften our heart. That's not letting back of the Word. See, being open to other believers and how they see the Scripture is not compromising the Word of God because the Word of God can speak for itself very clearly, and we need to let this be our foundation. This is, the, this is the Scripture that's very clear. It's the Word of God. It's the perfect Word of God. It is the only thing that we should base the foundation of our spiritual lives on. It's the only thing we should base any foundation on is the Word. And the Word tells us to be united in love. Even to that, some will say, no, you're trying to deceive me. All I can say is, believer, let the Holy Spirit guide you through the Word. Let Him help you discover the truth. Let Him help you unite in love. We need each other. You can respond to this message with either humility or pride. The choice is yours. I'm not talking to everyone. Look, I know some... Actually, the majority of you who are watching this are saying, Amen, I agree. I'm talking to that one who in their heart, they're trapped. They're isolated. They're angry. They're judgmental. They're critical. They're easy to cut people off. It's easy for them to do that because they're not rooted. It's okay to admit you've been wrong. I want to pray with you now. Jesus loves you. Remember that. The same Jesus in me is the same Jesus in you. And I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would begin to reveal and convict. Touch each one, I pray, Lord. Father, I pray that you would speak, that you would touch each heart. Help us to base our lives on your word, God, not on our opinions, not on our emotions, but on your word, which is the perfect truth. And Holy Spirit, guide us in that truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you agree. Say, amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you like information on how you can join the Spirit family, just go to the uh, link at the bottom of the screen. I shouldn't say link, the URL. It's not clickable exactly. But use that information, davidhernandezministries.com slash church. When you join the Spirit family, you will be joining a group that is now over 4,000 members strong. And they're from all around the world. You join today. It's absolutely free. I'll send you an email every single week with a fresh teaching. You'll also get a brand new cover of a worship song from Stephen Moctezuma. Sometimes he sends out originals too. And you'll be able to reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff so do that today. And by the way, we get some word that some of you are not getting those emails. If you're not getting those emails, check your email settings, contact our staff, but you should be getting them as soon as you sign up. Okay, I want to get to your comments now, and these comments are from last week's teaching, which is called The Greatest Command. If you'd like me to read your comments next week, be sure to leave them here in the comment section below, and I may read them on next week's edition of Spirit Church. So now the comments from last week. Corey Smoot writes, Evangelist Hernandez, thank you, my brother, for this powerful message. This was meant for me at this season of time in my life. God bless you and this ministry greatly. Keith Garrett writes, Great message and beautiful song. Thank you so much. I long for a closer relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing that I want more. You know, a lot of people told us that there was a hunger stirred as they watched last week's teaching a hunger to spend more time with Jesus. So be sure to check that one out. Akim Donla writes, We really need to give up the desires of this world as the world is not permanent and return to our first love. What a powerful sermon, Brother David. And the song, Better Is One Day, was so anointed. I love it, Brother Stephen. God bless your ministry. Stephen Moctezuma, my absolute favorite worship leader. Be sure to check out his worship playlist here on the Encounter TV Network. Andrea Wimmer writes, You have such a beautiful message, and the Holy Spirit is so evident in it. Thank you and blessings from Yahweh. Shalom. Well, we like to say this is the Holy Spirit's channel. He does with it whatever He wants, and many people say they experience His power and presence just by watching the content. And finally, Isaiah 61 TV writes, Awesome word, my brother. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and dedication to the gospel. I stand with you and Encounter TV. I agree with your prophetic declaration that you guys will fill the stadiums 
for the gospel. You are leading our generation into a time of great outpouring, and I pray that God will continue to expand your territory for his kingdom's sake. And he is certainly expanding his kingdom, his kingdom, through his ministry. We're just servants in it. Now, I have a very, very big announcement to make very soon. We just want to finalize a couple more things. So in about a week or two, you should be hearing from us uh, on this channel and on our many other social media platforms and emailing lists and whatnot. We have a very big announcement we're going to be giving to you. I think some of you might already know what it is, but I'm happy to share it. But I must say this, we need your support now more than ever. We're going to do big things for God. Let me tell you something. You will see those stadiums filled and you're going to see thousands and millions come to Jesus through this ministry. It's all about souls. It's all about preaching that gospel and getting this message out. So I need your help. Become a supporter today. Don't delay on this. Look, the gospel has to be preached and the Lord can return at any time. We don't know when his return is. So I need your support now. We want to win souls now. There are people who are waiting in their bondage, in their sin, in their darkness, and we need to send this message, which is light, through to them that they might be saved. Remember, we want to win souls and build the believer, and we do that through two simple outreaches. That's events and media. It's very simple, very straightforward, and we like to do that with excellence. So help us do it. If you're watching and you can give a one-time gift, there are some watching, you can give a gift of 100000 some of you can do 50, some of you can do 10,000, some of you can do 1,000. And then there are those who say, I'm not wealthy, but I can do $10. I can do $50. I can do $100. To the wealthy, I say, give out of your abundance. To those who are in tighter straits, I want you to know that as you give, God will supply your needs. And it's all about the gospel. It's not about what we can get from him. It's about what we can do for him. And so support us today. A one-time gift goes a long way, but if you'd like to become a monthly supporter, that's key for our ministry. You can become a monthly donor, and if you become a monthly supporter at $30 or more a month, I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare, or Encountering the Holy Spirit in every book of the Bible. It will be your choice when you partner with me at $30 or more a month. Look, we give because of souls. I don't apologize for asking for support because I know where it goes. It goes so that we might spread this message further than ever before. And the time is now. Big things are happening and you get to be a part of a great move of God. I get to be a part of a great move of God. It's all for His glory. Let's give extravagantly to the Lord. Let's bless His name. Let's, let's give and say, we're gonna sacrifice that the message might go forward. So, if you'd like to give, wait until the end of this video. If you're watching on YouTube, there's going to be a red button that appears. You can click it. If you're watching this on the app, wait for the video to end. It will disappear, and then you can click Partner with David. If you're watching this on, by any other means, use the information at the bottom of the screen to make your gift now. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.